The point of this video is to justify and understand the row operations of Gaussian elimination from the column point of view, which is our dominant perspective. Now, consider this linear system as before. Now, previously, based on our experience and insight, we would have come up with this solution. This is the general solution for this system that, like I said, with a little bit of experience, can be determined by noticing that the right-hand side is the sum of the first two columns, which produces this vector, saying we need one of the first column, one of the second column, and none of the third to produce the vector on the right-hand side. Just as a quick reminder, this is, of course, based on the decomposition interpretation of linear systems. And the null space is based on the realization that the middle column is the average of first and third. That's because eight is the average of seven and nine, five is the average of four and six, and two is right between one and three. So first column plus third column is exactly twice the middle column, which produces this vector and this null space. So this is the general solution to this system generated by our insight. Now let's pretend, and in the case of this problem, it's not so hard to pretend that we didn't see these relationships, that we didn't see that the right-hand side is the sum of the first two columns, and we didn't see that the middle column is the average of the other two. So how would we bring out those relationships if we don't see them to begin with? Well, the answer, of course, is Gaussian elimination. So we'll actually go forward with Gaussian elimination in just a little bit, but first, let's just perform a few random row operations on this system, remembering to do the same thing to the right-hand side as we do to the rows, and see what happens to the relationship among the columns and the relationship of the right-hand side to the columns of the matrix. So the first row operation that we'll consider is adding a multiple of one row to another. So let's add, let's say, 10 of the first row to the second row. This won't help us with Gaussian elimination, and I'm picking a multiple of 10 just so that I don't have to do much erasing. So adding 10 of the first row to the second leaves the first row unchanged, but the second row becomes 4 plus 10, 14, 5 plus 20, 25, and 6 plus 30, 36. And doing the same thing on the right-hand side leaves us with a 39. So now let's see what happened to the relationships among the columns. Is it still true that the middle column is the average of the other two? I'll give you just a moment to answer that question. So yes, it is true because two is still the average of one and three and eight is still the average of seven and nine. Those numbers are unchanged. And 25 is of course the average of 14 and 36, because 14 plus 36 is 50, divided by 2, 25. So this row operation preserved the relationships among the columns. Let's see if the right-hand side is still the sum of the first two columns. Well, in the first entry and the last entry, of course, it's still true, because those are unchanged. And let's see, 39 is indeed 14 plus 25. So this row operation not only preserved the relationships among the columns, but also similarly preserved the linear relationship of the vector on the right-hand side to the columns of the matrix. So in summary, adding a multiple of one row to another preserves the relationships among the columns and the relationship of the right-hand side to the columns of the matrix. In other words, it preserved the solution set because the solution depends only on those relationships. So adding a multiple of one row to another is something that we can do and that will keep the solution set. In fact, it will keep all of the relationships among all of the columns. In particular, it will preserve the null space. This row operation preserves the null space. Uh, if, you're, if you think that this is very easy, then I'll give you a question to think about. What about the column space? Do row operations preserve the column space? So as you're thinking about that, we'll consider another operation, which is multiplying a row by a number. So I'll multiply the first row, actually the third row, by 11. 
Let's multiply the third row by 11 and then ask the same questions that we did before. So doing so leaves us with 77, 88, 99, ooh, and 165. And 165. So now let's see if the relationships among the columns are preserved. Is the middle column still the average of the other two? And the answer is, of course, yes it is. And is the vector on the right hand side still the sum of the first two columns? Well, let's see. In the first two entries it's obvious because those remained unchanged. And in the last entry we have 150 plus 15, 165. So those relationships, in fact all of the relationships, are once again preserved. So adding a multiple of one row to another preserves all of the relationships among the columns and so does multiplying a row by a number. What about the last remaining row operation, which is switching rows? Well, let's switch the first row and the last row, excuse me, first and second, leaving us with, let's see, one, two, three. Nope, I specifically left the second row still here so I can copy it, 14, 25, 36 and 39 and in the second row we now have 1, 2, 3 and 3. Okay, so this is the last row operation that's considered part of Gaussian elimination. So let's see if all of the relationships are still preserved. Is the middle column still the average of the other two? Well, yes, of course it is. And is the column on the right hand side still the sum of the first two columns? Well, of course it still is. It's just clear none of the relationships among the numbers changed, just their locations changed. So in summary, all three row operations of Gaussian elimination leave all of the relationships among the columns unchanged. And it therefore leaves the particular solution unchanged and it therefore preserves the null space. So the idea of Gaussian elimination is to use those row operations, which clearly don't change the solution set, to make the system successively simpler until the relationships among the columns, which could not be seen before, become evident. That's the idea of Gaussian elimination. And it's justified, this approach is justified by the fact that the, these three row operations do not change the relationships among the columns and they therefore don't change the particular solution or the null space. So that's the justification. So now let's work out a strategy for using these row operations in such a way as to make the solution, is to make the entries of the matrix and the right hand side so simple that the relationships that may not be apparent to begin with become obvious.